Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is Mango Oblivion Plays and on Saturday, October 26th, I got to go to the first um, of my town's Scarlet and Violet Surging Sparks pre-release events. Um, there is going to be another weekend of these events um, right after Halloween. So I just wanted to go over kind of my experience with this pre-release, talk about the format a little bit, and then some of the cards I think are going to be very helpful if you are going to be going to one of these events in this coming weekend. So to start off, um, let's talk about what the pre-release promos are. Uh, there is Indeedy. Uh, Indeedy has the Obliging Heal ability. So when you play it from your hand onto the bench, um, you get to heal 30 damage from your active Pokemon, and then you can recover special conditions. So there are some circumstances where that might be very helpful. Um, I do feel like uh, Ndidi is definitely the weakest of these four promos, at least in this format that I was playing in. Um, next up, we have Magneton. Magneton has um, an ability that lets you sacrifice it, and then you get to attach three energies to an Electric-type Pokemon. Um, could be very helpful depending on which Pokemon you have in your deck. There's a couple Pokemon that could benefit from this um, in this set. Uh, Tapu Koko, another Magneton, or the Pikachu EX, which is kind of the cover Pokemon for the set. Next up is Chen Pao. Its ability lets you discard stadiums. Um, so if somebody did play a stadium, you can get rid of it with Chen Pao. Um, and it does some decent damage for the format, doing 120 damage with Icicle Loop. And then finally, Gouging Fire, which I think is probably the best promo you can get, um, is a great attacker. Um, for three energies, you're going to be doing 170 damage from the get-go, um, because you only do 70 damage or more if your opponent has four or less prizes. And since you're starting with four prizes, that means Gouging Fire is hitting at its top capacity right away. So if you get this thing energized and ready to go, you're going to be dealing a lot of damage really early on. There's not a lot of Pokemon that can take 170 damage hits. So that's kind of exciting. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about what my deck was. Um, I did manage to pull a Latios card. Um, I think Latios is a great opener in this format. It has a lot of different ways that it can get um, some damage onto Opposing Pokemon, um, its skill dive attack does 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, so you can do some snipe damage onto the bench. I took a lot of KOs that way. Um, Jet Headbutt is a great attack as well, because it can knock out a lot of uh, weaker Pokemon in the format, so you could utilize Jet Headbutt to take a KO if you need to. I also played one copy of Tapu Lele. Um, I used Tapu Lele because of the Perplex Mental Crush combo. Perplex does 20 damage, but then your uh, opponent's Pokemon is confused. Not a lot of ways to switch in this uh, format, so um, the confusion is a very uh, dangerous condition to have. And then Mental Crush does 180 damage if the opposing Pokemon is confused, so you can do a lot of damage uh, with this Tapu Lele card. Another big part, the thing that I got in my... I pulled these from packs. Um, Wochan and Rabskill were the one half of my... Uh, pre-release kit, um, and these cards really focus on doing damage when there are three or fewer cards in your deck. Now this has to be, this is a really dangerous strategy, um, I guess less dangerous in this format, but in general, right, you don't want to get yourself too low on how many cards you have. Um, Rabska and Wo Chen both have ways to mill through your own deck, um, and then they have really great attacks when you have three cards or less. Hazardous Greed does 20 to the active, but then 120 to two bench Pokemon, so you can just end games with Hazardous Greed. Counter Turn, if somebody does have a really strong Pokemon, uh, you can do 240 damage uh, and really take out that strong Pokemon with Rapska. The other half of my pre-release kit had Tapu Koko. Um, Summoning Lightning lets you get electric Pokemon into your hand. Prize count is a great attack if you are behind. 180 damage is hard to come back from in this format. Uh, Magneton was my promo. Um, and then I had Magnezone, uh, which we could use with Magneton. Lots of energy here. My, my thing did come with two reversal energies, so if I do get behind, which I could do with Magneton, Magnezone can do a lot of damage with that. Um, it also can confuse, so that's very good with Tapu Lele. 
So that was kind of the basis of my deck, um, really focusing on um, combos and damage. Um, the big hits I got in my pre-release kit, I did get, um, the Latios I did get was this full art version. It was very beautiful, very happy to have gotten that. I pulled the Technical Machine Fluorite um, in um, one of my extra packs I won at the end, uh, which can be used. This is great. I love that these Technical Machines with these Terra moves can be used by any Pokemon. Um, you discard all energy and then heal all damage from your Terra Pokemon. Not very great in the format, but very has the potential in the meta if you're doing a, a Terra deck. And then Lycia's Appeal. I got this full art version. Um, it's basically boss's orders, but the active Pokemon is confused. Um, so one extra bonus. I'm not sure it would really... I don't think it's going to be taking boss's orders spot anytime soon. But when boss's orders does get rotated, I wouldn't be surprised if Lycia's Appeal takes its place as the premier gust card. Um, with a little bit of an extra bonus in there, which is cool. Um, the the one problem is you do have to do it to a basic Pokemon, so if your all your opponent's Pokemon are evolved, that's not going to work. Um, here are some of the cards from the set that you're probably going to be looking for. I'm going to go over eight of them real quick. The first one is Archaladon EX. Um, it has the ability Assemble Alloy. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may attach up to two basic metal energy from your discard pile to your metal Pokemon, however you like. Metal Defender is a great attack, does 220 damage. Um, and during your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon has no weakness, so you can get rid of its fire weakness um, with its attack, which is pretty great. Pikachu EX is a great Pokemon. Um, Magneton goes really well with it. It cannot get knocked out in one hit if it has full hit points. And Topaz Bolt can pretty much KO anything. Um, Alolan Executor EX, pretty interesting card. Tropical Frenzy does 115. Then you can attach basic energy cards from your hand to your Pokemon, however you feel like. Um, and then Swinging Savine, you flip a coin, and if heads, you knock out your opponent's Pokemon. If tails, you knock out one of your opponent's benched basic Pokemon. So um, pretty interesting um, attack there. Black Hiram EX, Ice Age, if your opponent's attack, the active Pokemon is a dragon, it is now paralyzed, does 90 damage. And then Black Frost does 250, but you take some damage yourself. So that's a pretty tough um, attack to take. Uh, Cerule Edge EX, um, got Abyssal Flames, does 30 damage, plus 20 more for each energy in the discard pile. Raging Amethyst uh, does 280, so if you need to take a big KO... Scovillain's an interesting card. It does count as grass and fire, so you can get a lot of uh, different Pokemon with that. And Spicy Rage um, does a lot of damage um, when it gets hurt. Latias EX is a great card in the pre-release format, and also just in general, it does make your basic Pokemon have no retreat costs. So this is an, an excellent card to potentially play as a, um, as a utility card on your bench if you're really into switching. Um, you could use this with... Um, uh, Iron Valiant EX, make it so they can switch automatically. They don't have to worry about having the booster capsule. And then there's a Sylveon EX card as well. It's a pretty decent card. Magical Charm does 160, and then attacks used by defending Pokemon do 100 less to Sylveon, so that's pretty cool. And then Angelite, you have to choose two of your opponent's bench Pokemon and then shuffle them into your opponent's deck. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, pretty solid cards there. Uh, generally, the pre-release format was pretty good. Um, I faced a lot of decks that relied on... They were water-based. So it was like Chen Pao. They had Quaquavel, which was a good way to burn through um, your deck because it was it has draw power. Um, and then they were combat uh, comboed with the Chen Pao and the Rabska. Um, the other deck archetypes I really saw were uh, Gouging Fire um, and Friends. Um, and then the electric deck, which was the one I had, um, the Magneton and the Magnazone, and then they were paired up usually with the Chen Pao and the Wo Chen. So a lot of the a lot of the decks focused on milling yourself, um, which was kind of an interesting format to play in, right? When you're trying to burn through your own deck. Um, overall, very fun. Um, if you do go to a Surging Sparks pre-release event, 
Uh, let me know how it goes. If you pull anything cool, uh, let, let us know in the comments. Until next time, uh, this has been Mango Oblivion Plays. Um, stay tuned in about a week or so when the, when the set comes out. We will be opening an Elite Trainer box on the channel um, so you can see what we pull there. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again soon, trainers.